Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm your host, Michael Teal, and we are talking today about addressing the technical skills gap, and it is growing faster and faster. We needed to bring in a real thought leader on this topic, and we have a fantastic guest today. Here in the studio with me is Roger Boise, Senior Director of GPI Learn Plus. Roger, thank you for being with us, sir. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing well, Michael. It's uh, nice to be with you today. Roger, let me start out with some basics as we get into this topic. First of all, I see you on camera, even though we're doing a podcast. Where is home for you, sir? Uh, so, Michael, home for me is uh, in Auburn, New Hampshire. Been uh, been here uh, about 26 years. So, uh, uh, love the state. Uh, was born and raised and uh, uh, left for a period of time, but came back. I guess you find your way home, so to speak. I am jealous. I am in Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to hit 110 today. So, you know, I would trade spaces if you want to do that, Roger. I'll just throw that out there right now. Maybe in February we could do that. <laughs> yeah, in February we'll work it out there. But first of all, share some of your professional bio with our global listening audience here. Yeah, so Michael, my my background, you know, um, I've been with GP now uh, actually just uh, just over a year. But my um, my uh, my background uh, before uh, being the senior director of the GPI Learn Plus team here uh, was. Uh, about uh, 30 years in the power generation industry, uh, where I held different levels uh, from, uh, you know, um, you know, day-to-day operations uh, and, and as an operator for a number of years through management roles, uh, and then, uh, you know, ultimately uh, the end of my uh, the end of my time in that arena was at uh, <clears throat> at the executive level. Uh, in the corporate role um, and uh, managing a number of uh, plants, uh, and um, I uh, pri- I also had some previous uh, experience in the uh, high tech uh, manufacturing world for a couple of years, uh, and then prior to that, I started my career. I was a naval officer, um, served about four years uh, in that role, uh, and uh, graduated uh, prior to that from uh, from Maine Maritime Academy up in uh, Castine, Maine. So that's uh, that's my professional background, and I'm sticking to it. We definitely have the right man for the job in terms of the talking about technical skills gap. So I'm super excited about that. You passed the test, Roger. Share one fun fact about you as someone from the New England area. Boy, fun fact, huh? So yeah, let's see. Fun um, fact. I guess uh, fun fact for me is I, uh, even though I live in New Hampshire, the fa- one of my favorite places is being uh, being at the beach and uh, being in the sun near the ocean. So uh, I'm a, a huge supporter of that, uh, and I uh, it gives me a lot of peace, and uh, I uh, it's uh, it's something that I enjoy greatly. Don't get to do enough of it, but when I do, it's <laughs> uh, it's the most fun there is. So. Fellow beach bum, perfect. So Roger, let's get into this topic here. So when we're thinking about addressing the technical skills gap. I want to know from your side, you know, being at uh, the both the supplier side, but also the client side, what are some of the challenges that companies are facing right now in trying to tackle and address this growing skills gap? Yeah, you know, Michael, it's really kind of a comprehensive challenge. Um, I, I think you have to look at it really broadly and it it, it it it's it's that technical skills gap really is impacted in a number of uh, fronts. It's it's the hiring f- uh, phase, onboarding, developing the employee, and retaining. And um, you know it, it's really a full package uh, that uh, that will retain somebody and then that will close the gaps. Uh, really having a a good um, call it a good scorecard, I guess, if you will, but a, a good plan that uh, that's holistic that covers all of those areas yeah and you know when i look at this skills gap i kind of break it down to it's you know what are the skills that an employee has versus the ones that they need and you know i know we're running into all kinds of challenges regarding that here in the world so talk a little bit about some of the things that you're seeing when working with clients in terms of these forces that are acting on the organization. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Michael, from the standpoint of, you know, from a from a hiring standpoint, that's that's a that's a, a probably one of the, you know, I don't want to say the bigger challenges, but obviously it's the first challenge, right, of the list. Um, 
And, and that's become much more of a challenge in the last five to 10 years. And I think it's really due to a number of, uh, number of reasons, really. I mean, the talent pool is more limited. Um, people are able to be more choosy for what they're looking for. Um, uh, there's a lot of competition out there. Um, the, the feeders to our industry, to, to power generation and, and even manufacturing are another area that's, um, that's seeing some challenges, uh, due to, uh, different technologies and skill sets, you know, where years back, you got a lot of people, uh, into the power generation industry that were ex military, uh, and, uh, or, or worked in the power industry at other facilities. Uh, that's, it's becoming, um, it's becoming, uh, more difficult to find those people because, for a couple of reasons, one there's a there's a, a great deal of people that are retiring from the workforce, uh, and 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 you had a lot of long time personnel that were highly qualified and highly skilled, and and they're retiring, and now those are getting filled with with folks that um, don't have that background per se that you you may have seen twenty years ago. Uh, and that's, um, you know, that's, that's a big challenge when you're trying to bring in people to a, a, a power generation world, a, a highly technical area where there's, a, you know, a 24 seven lifestyle. It's very, um, you know, it's difficult to find those folks right now, especially with all the competition that's out there. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny you mentioned this because now this isn't power generation specific. Most of my background has been more in the automotive performance side. But I was just at last week a dealer conference and universally heard this same technical skills gap in the automotive dealership operations. They said, you know what, I could build a dealership with 35 more uh, stalls for technicians. My challenge is finding the technicians and recruiting and training them um, and obviously keeping them. So it sounds like we're getting a similar thing within the power generation field. Am I right? It is absolutely. It's uh, it's, and we see that through some of our current customers at, at GP. You know, whether it be automotive or power generation, like I say, manufacturing. Uh, it's it's, you know, it's finding those folks that want to invest the time in learning those skills, um, those technical skills, uh, and it's and it's it's then the companies taking the time and re putting in place the resources to be able to build those people into those roles. Uh, because that, you know, that gets into that next phase of onboarding and developing. Uh, and, and it takes a, a great deal of resources. Uh, and, and I'll say, I'll say it this way, in, in my opinion, uh, it's more than what it took 10 or 15, 20 years ago, because again, at that point, you were bringing in people that had a lot of skill, that had the knowledge, that had those fundamental qualities that mm -hmm. you that, that folks in those technical arenas were looking for because they may have they may have worked for, you know, General Motors may have worked for, you know, whatever, uh, you know, Ford or whatever the case may be. And they if they they brought in people that were growing up in organizations, uh, and and even power generation was the same way. As people grew up in organizations, they had those skills and knowledges, and then those became the next leaders of organizations. And um, you know, you've got a shrinking market now. Um, you know, a lot of the coal plants have retired or and are continuing to retire. You're seeing nuclear facilities that are being shut down. You're seeing you know uh, a big push on renewables. But um, and and it's great. Don't get me wrong. Renewables <laughs> is is going to be part of the future from a standpoint of um, you know sp standpoint of power gen for sure. Uh, it's just that you don't need 120 people to run a wind farm, right? right. So you you your your numbers are different. So again, you you you're you're finding people. You're trying to find the best people that you can, and you're you're you're. It's it's a difficult ch challenge to get those people in the door. So, Roger, what I'm hearing from you is that there's there's not only a challenge in terms of individuals coming in and lacking the baseline foundational skills. 
but also the fact that in the power generation industry, as an example, there's been a shift to even what the baseline skills might be, right? So if you're saying we're shifting to renewables, somebody that is is um, from you know natural gas, you might not even have the foundational thing. So there's a transformation type challenge there. Fair to say? From an operation standpoint, for sure. I think on the technical uh, craft skills side of it, you tend to see... Um, you know, you send, you tend to see more alignment there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, electricians and and instrumentation and controls technicians. You know, those skill sets are in great demand a, a across the board uh, as far as uh, industry. Um, so, you know, getting getting candidates in uh, to fill those uh, positions is is a is a great challenge for manufacturing for, uh, you know, automotive and uh, power gen as well. So I'm curious on your side, since we're coming in with a couple of different sectors of domain expertise, is there a fight in terms of job jumping or a uh, fight for talent within organizations in the power generation industry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there, there's, there is a, there is a great deal of job jumping, uh, and a lot of it's driven by money, quite frankly. Um, you know, pay has become a, a big uh, player in the last uh, handful of years. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, that's just, that's always going to be there, I guess I would say, but, um, you know, but it, but it's also, uh, you know, people, like I said before, they're, they're more choosy. So, you know, what kind of benefits can they offer? And, and, and quite frankly, to get to the heart of something that we're talking about here, what kind of training does a company p- provide them, right? What, what are they going to, what can a company do to develop that individual so that they can become your next, uh, your next, uh, you know, five year, 10 year employee, um, you know, instead of losing people, right. Instead of people leaving at three months or one month or six months, um, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to, you, you put, uh, you know, companies in general put a great deal of, of, of money, a great deal of time and effort into, um, into training, uh, you know, to, to, to just get people into the company. Uh, and if it's not the right path, if it's not the right plan, then um, those people will leave. And, uh, and then you have to start all over again. And that's expensive. And that's just, right. Moment, uh, you know, momentum works both ways, right? So you can yep. have some yep. challenges there. So I guess the other thing I was going to ask you in terms of some of these challenges is, you know, you'd mentioned job jumping. How has that also been impacting overall leadership? What kind of challenges are you seeing there regarding skills gaps and those leading individuals? Well, yeah, I think, you know, what you're seeing, and again, this is, this is common to, I think, many industries is the whole aspect of frontline leadership, um, where today's frontline leaders, those floor managers, uh, are, um, you know, are being promoted because there just is not, um, you know, there just is not anyone to fill that void. And, and so people are being promoted, um, I'll say, prematurely. Like a battlefield uh, and, promotion, right? Yeah, and they and and you know they were they were the guys operating the equipment. They were the folks that were you know uh, working in the plant or in the in the manufacturing facility, and now they're put in charge of people with really um, you know with really limited experience in managing and developing people. So if you know if they're not doing a good job, then again that just you know if we don't get them trained in the right way then um, the people that then work for them will get frustrated and they do, <laughs> and then they leave. So, and then the cycle, it's a, you know, that vicious cycle, right? It starts all over again. So, you know, that it reminds me of that classic show, The Office. So remember Michael Scott from that? I mean, the fact is people lose sight. He was the best salesperson in the company. I mean, he was a rock star salesperson, but a terrible manager. So, you know, he probably needed some, 
some help in that side, besides the fact that it made us all laugh for a decade. Yeah, ever. well, this is true. So. This is true. Let's talk about a couple of things. So I know, GP, we're obviously a workforce transformation company across sectors, across the globe. I know that we have a couple of solutions that you have been working very closely with. So I wanted to just pose this to you, first of all, because I'm not real familiar with it, and I, that's why I kind of love having this chance as the podcast host to learn about it. Tell me a little bit about both a couple things, the GP iLearn Plus team and also the GP technical teams. And what are you focusing on to help meet some of these challenges we've just talked about? Yeah, so so the GP iLearn product is a, is a product that uh, has been around at, uh, at GP uh, for, geez, over 20 years now. Um, and uh, it's a, it's a web-based uh, training content uh, where it's focused on technical skills, uh, it's focused on compliance training, uh, and it's focused on other operations and maintenance technical training for both um, craft skills uh, individuals as well as operations okay. personnel. Um, and, and uh, you know, we've got a huge focus on um, as, as, you know, as this product has developed over the years, uh, the focus has been placed in, uh, you know, those key areas of, of safety, compliance, making sure that we're staying current so that we can get this fundamental training to, um, companies in a very easy cost-effective manner, right? It's, 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 um, you know, it's all web-based, so it's, uh, okay. it, it just needs login access to do so. Uh, and, um, and, and as well as then our technical content, making sure that that's staying current and up to date. Uh, and there's been a, a very strong push in the last five to six years with GPI learn of really going through all of our technical training to make sure that we're staying uh, current to make sure that we are, um, engaging, um, you know, engaging the learner in the areas that are focused on what they need, uh, you know, so in some cases where, you know, it was, you know, I'll call it death by training, maybe many years ago, where you had a, a 50 minute course on something, um, we're finding better, more, more uh, efficient ways to get that material across to folks in, in less time. So in maybe 30 minutes, you know, and getting to the point more, focusing on those key areas that are, right. are most critical. And, and really trying to develop our product in that way so that when a company looks at it, right, and they're trying to build their training program, you know, GPI Learn is a great foundational tool to get folks those initial fundamentals and technical components that they need of that, call that that overall package. Is this something that can be customized for either a specific industry subset? You know, we've done this in different sectors of the power industry, right? We've done it in in uh, the gas turbine world. We've done some custom stuff in the waste to energy world. We've done some custom uh, stuff in, uh, in the old, you know, prior to more recent times, but the coal industry. Uh, so it, it, it can be done. Um, and it's something that GP uh, strategies does very well. Uh, so it's, it's an area in which, you know, it's, it's in conversation with the, with the customer or the potential customer and to, to find out what their needs are, to find out what they're focused on. And a lot of times we can meet their needs with just the, the general stuff that we're doing, maybe supported by some classroom training that, you know, our, our technical training group uh, can provide. So you've, you've kind of, again, GP Strategies is very good at building out that full package of what a customer needs. I, I call it a one-stop shop or call it, you know, uh, you know it's all in, all in the bucket, so to speak. But you can, you can we have the teams, um, you know, not just in GP I Learn, but across the organization to, you know, develop onboarding. Uh, programs to put together what the safety and compliance training programs are for an organization to uh, to provide them learning management systems to manage it all uh, uh, to then you know the next phases of the training initial training and then possibly advanced classroom and even hands-on training at uh, local sites right I mean GP does does all of those things and we do it well being you know uh, 
you know, to, to stick with the tagline a little there, right? The workforce transformation company, right? That really is our, that's our fastball down the middle, right? So, um, you know, building it well, from and, you know, to, to, to To go to the baseball analogy, what I'm hearing from you though, with the technical training team that you are uh, leading is the fact that you're blending the subject matter expertise in this domain. And this is a very specific domain, but you're blending that with the instructional design expertise. So you're getting, as you said, the one-stop shop of not only here's what you need to do, but here's the art and science of sequencing that into a cadence, into a learning journey, into something that's both uh, interesting for the learner, but also it's sequenced in, in a way that helps them retain the information so you actually get results, right? Absolutely. Do you have any examples of any deployments recently that could uh, be a good example of how iLearn has helped a client meet a challenge? Without getting specific on any one customer, I think where where we meet the challenge well um, with a number of our customers is when we're able to come in and provide them that holistic view. In other words, what, what what is the plan, right? Help them develop the plan so that it works for them, right? Take that burden off of them, right? So understand what their challenges are, uh, help them develop the plan. And then what we do then is provide them, you know, the GPI Learn uh, instructional uh, training online in combination to then where we've uh, advanced it with some companies is then it gets into that next phase of, okay, well, we've got that fundamental, but we really need a specific course on whatever, pump alignment. And so we've got a whole technical crew that can bring equipment on a site and it's not part of GPI Learn, it's part of, uh, you know, part of our, our technical uh, technical workforce training group, but they go, they'll go on site and they'll teach a course and it's all hands on and teach folks uh, how to align pumps. Right. And, and then, you know, then it gets into the broader discussion of, okay, well, what's next? Well, we need frontline leadership training, right? Well, geez, you know, GP strategies has a, as a we great arm. <laughs> We've got a great arm of, 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 of good, uh, solid fundamental frontline leadership training, uh, and, and getting those people, those skills to be able to succeed, uh, in again, going back to what they lacked of developing, engaging their workforce, right? We'll give them the tools so that they can understand how to do that better. Right. Um, and then, and then the cycle, you know, and I, uh, without naming names, I can tell you that we've done that with a number of organizations and that's really, you know, that's our fundamental, that's our best value. I would say, you know, do we provide those individual things to companies? Absolutely. And we would do that without question when when you can really try to tie all of those things together. I think that really then starts to fight that, you know, what our goal of this conversation was, was how do you address those skills gaps, right? It's not just specific, it's really kind of a broad, uh, a broad more broad discussion or a broader discussion. You know, looking back, let's just say in the past 10 years in your industry, in the industrial and power business, um, what's been your take on the level of buy-in uh, within the industry? I, I think it got behind because there was such engagement with uh, a strong workforce, maybe 15 or 20 years ago in a number of industries. Companies could, you know, they could make do with providing enough training just to keep people moving because they had those people on the front lines that were skilled and they were training people and they had the knowledge and the experience to do so. And then I believe when people started to leave, when you started to see those retirements uh, taking place and you started to see organizations changing and a little bit of a higher turnover rate within organizations, I think those companies that then ramped up the amount of investment that they made in training and really committed to it were able to stem some of those issues better than those in which when you talk about resources, that's what it comes down to. Those that invest in it uh, tend to succeed more than those that don't. And I think probably five to seven, eight years ago, you started to see uh, um, where the companies that just kind of carried on as they did before got behind, you know, then they would just try to plug holes and fill gaps instead of stopping and stepping back and creating that investment that really was needed uh, to, to, to change that dynamic in any one organization. Roger, okay, so we've unpacked a lot today. We've introduced 
not only some challenges, but also some solutions to addressing the technical skills gap. If someone is driving right now or listening to the podcast and they say, I want to know more about about this, where should they start? Well, Michael, I think the, the, the first thing that they can do, it's the easiest, is just go to gpstrategies.com. And uh, if you look at industries we serve, you'll see uh, all of the different industries that uh, that GP Strategies provide service to. If, you're, if your interest is really specific to energy or specific to the GPI Learn Plus technical training itself, uh, you know, you can you can find it through there, or you can just email us at gpilearn at gpstrategies.com and and uh, someone would be uh, you know myself or someone else would get back to you and and have a conversation about what we can do. Roger, on behalf of our global listening audience, thank you so much for sharing your insight today, sir. Great, thanks, Michael. Appreciate being here. The Performance Matters Podcast is brought to you by GP Strategies. Together, we can create a world where business excellence makes possibilities achievable. You can subscribe to the show anywhere you get podcasts or listen on our website at gpstrategies.com.